What's up YouTube? Ian Sandusky back here again for the Let's Machine. Today we're going to be going through how to take something that's a prototype, like, for instance, it's a little sharp, my original tri-handle that I made in a previous video, and turn it into something for production, like our new and improved tri-handle. Um, prototyping obviously uses different processes and has kind of different objectives compared to doing something for production. Um, you're going to be concerned about different things regarding, you know, machining time, regarding, uh, you know, efficiency of the machines you choose to use. Um, you know, there's different parameters. For plain and simple, I made this sort of things we had on hand. So this was wire cut and this is cold roll steel. In production, this is stainless steel, this is all melt. There's nice rods on everything now. Um, you know, I'm a lot happier with this product because I refined it based on the mistakes I made in this. Very common process, why you make prototypes, right? Uh, one thing I did do is I forgot to, some of you guys complained the other day that I forgot to uh, film when I did some of these parts on the lathe. I didn't film it again. Um, the lathe parts, all it was was face, drill, and top, really simple stuff. Um, hopefully I'll make a video doing some lathe stuff soon. Seems to be a metal guy. Um, that all said, let's go upstairs. Let's take a look at Mastercam. We'll see how I kind of planned out this process and uh, how we programmed it, okay? Let's go take a look. This is my first operation. Uh, first and foremost, if we look right here, you'll see this says Rise Desipite. Uh, I messed this up. I actually made two pieces with this incorrect spelling before I caught it. Um, just goes to show you need to be, it's supposed to say Rise Spite, obviously. You need to be on top of even the littlest stuff. Um, you know, things can get by you very easily. Uh, this got by me. I ended up catching it, but you know, not my proudest mistake. So first and foremost, uh, we are going to go through and we're going to drill, spot drill these three holes. I'll turn that on there so you can see it. That's going to be drilled and then I'm going to drill it out with a 2564th drill because I want clearance for 3.8 screws. Uh, just a side screw I chose to use for that. Let me turn everything off here. After that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to pocket out these uh, these two pockets using a 3 8 end mill. You can see here, uh, just a very standard pocket. There's nothing special about it. I'm leaving 5 thou on the walls only because I want to make sure I get in those corners real tight. If I had been smart, I would have made sure that a 3 8 cutter could fit right in these corners. But uh, alas, I didn't really think of that. That's kind of a design flaw on my part. So at the end, I go and I clean these up with a quarter inch end mill, uh, just to make sure everything's nice and tight in there. And this is, I think this is exactly on 3.8, so it doesn't always like to get right in that corner. So that's why I have a quarter inch going in there just to make sure. Um, after that, I'm using a 1 16th rad tool to go in and do the insides of these. If I turn this all off, you can see it. Oops. It's got a quarter inch pilot. Um, you can see it's going in a nice open spot, just going, I have the overlap on there. Um, that's in the lead in, lead out. You can see I have a 75 thou overlap. Just, just to make sure there's no little nib there where it uh, where it touches. The way I program rad tools is uh, I programmed it as a quarter inch end mill. That's my tool diameter, but obviously it just has a 250 thou pilot, which is the bottom of the rad cutter. The actual diameter, the like major diameter of it is half inch. But if I program it as uh, a quarter inch cutter, all I have to do is drop it down. It's a 1 16th rad tool, so I drop it down 62 and a half thou and follow that quarter inch tool path and it comes out just perfect in my opinion anyway. Uh, after that I'm using a, it says 132nd flat ML, I'm actually using a uh, quarter inch chamfer tool to do all this engraving. I just always put 132 flat ML so then when I go and I uh, run it on the screen it just kind of has a tiny little uh, engraving there so I can see it. It doesn't really matter, I could have this as a 3 inch cutter um, as long as I put it in the right tool. Um, maybe not the best practice but that's just kind of how I've always done things. Okay. So that's op one. We're gonna not save that. For op two, where is this try handle? This is gonna be op two. We're gonna make a fixture out of aluminum. Um, you can see here it's a block a little bigger than my plate. We're gonna drill and tap three holes in it so I can hold down that plate. The insides here are already gone, obviously. So since those insides are gone and we know they're nice and accurate, because I'm cleaning them up a few times with different cutters, I know those holes are gonna be fairly accurate. So what I've done is I've put, basically left these. Uh, as two islands on this plate, this aluminum plate we're doing. So our part will locate on those two um, areas there. I'm just gonna chamfer them down too to make sure you know it fits on nicely, nicely like that. I'm gonna face off and pocket this entire thing down um, to a depth of 100 thou. So I still have 150, the, I'm using quarter inch plate to make these things. 
So I'll still have 100, 150,000 clamp on and everything and uh, everything should work well that way. In this operation, uh, all we're doing really is just facing this all the way. This is kind of a, a trick. I don't really know if it's the right way to do things, but again, how I've always done things. My actual plate is only this size. And I'll turn off the screen here. My actual plate of aluminum is only this size. What I've done is I just drew a bigger square here or a rectangle there. And so when I do a pocket, it's gonna make sure that it cleans everything up. Um, obviously it will do one kind of useless finish pass out here, but I'm feeding it like hundred inches a minute, so it doesn't really matter. Um, just kind of a quick and dirty way to do things as I tend to do everything it seems, okay? Lastly, after we're done that, we're going to take this and put, take our plate and put it on the fixture. So we're using the exact same origin and everything that way. Um, all we're doing is I'm coming in and I'm cutting this off. So the first cut is going to be kind of rough because it's cutting through 303 plate. It's going to cut this entire thing off. And then I'm just stepping in a quarter inch at a time. Um, I know theoretically I could probably just go in and cut it off. This is just kind of how I like to do it. Um, but I don't know. Everybody has their own way of doing things. If I was going to production, I'd probably do this a little differently, but this is a small run. Uh, like I said, you know, when we're doing things for 10 pieces, it's different than we're gonna do things for 100 pieces or 1,000. And since this is an in-house project, I don't care all that much. I just wanna get the job done. <clears throat> so after I hit it with a uh, half inch flat rougher, I'm gonna hit it with a finish just to make sure the finish is nice. Then I'm gonna use my rad cutter to cut around the outside. Now I'm gonna put that rad, uh, this plate in with the engraving up. So the rad is already done on the inside. So all I'm going to do for a final operation is I'm going to put this thing back on the same fixture, uh, engraving side down, and I'm going to cut all the rads on it just so everything's nice and round. Um, obviously, this is using the gym setting.
So there you have it guys, that's how we're going to make a tri-handle when we go through production. Um, very fortunate to say that a few of these have already sold. Um, these ones in particular, the two I just made and assembled, they are going to Good Life in Newmarket, Good Life Fitness, if you guys are Canadian you know Good Life that way. Uh, if you want to try them out, they're going to be at the Good Life uh, Young and Davis location. That said, I am probably going to put these up on a new website I'm putting together to sell some of my non-Lakewood related stuff. Um, kind of putting together a website right now just to kind of sell some of the stuff and market some of the stuff that I do uh, on the side, this being one of them. Uh, if you're interested, of course, you can always send me an email that way. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, guys, you can always email me. My email is letsmachine at gmail.com. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, the only thing I probably will do on some future ones is knurl the handles. Uh, these ones were requested not to be knurled uh, because the sample I gave them originally was not knurled uh, and they liked it that way. So that said, you know, uh, this will probably be modified as time goes on, but uh, we'll see what happens, okay? Thanks very much for coming and hanging out with me, guys. If you want to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, guys. You take care.